Haynes stars a 16 wickets tumble on topsy turvy first day. Defeat to Hampshire last week was another nail in the coffin of Warwickshire's title reign. They return home to Edgebaston to face a Kent side with an identical record. They trail the Bears by just five points. Their draw against Northamptonshire, their fifth of the season. Conventional wisdom suggests batting first in these hot conditions, but Will Rhodes saw something and he opted to start the day in the field and picked up an early scalp. Ben Compton out caught behind for four. Bell Drummond would make it two with the score just 28. The Kent's number three trapped in front by Hannon Dalby for 10. The Bears were on the charge. Short work made of Joe Denley, another for Hannon Dalby, the number four out caught by a diving Benjamin. Kent were in all sorts of trouble. They had barely put 30 on the board when they lost a fourth. Hannon Dalby in inspired form, leaning LBW for a duck. Rowe's decision to bowl first was vindicated. Hannon Dalby on fire. Crawley his fifth from just five and a bit overs of bowling. The England opener trapped in front for 17. Rhodes was wayward to see 50 go up on the board, but Kent had a ton of work to do and the Bears were all over them. Billings and Cox rebuilt and did well. The Kent captain curbing attacking instincts and the duo moved their way towards 100 before lunch. They wandered in for the break at 96 for five. Not out of the woods yet, but the score looked much healthier. They moved the score past three figures after lunch, but Warwickshire continued to cause them problems and Hannon Dalby capitalised for his sixth. Cox out caught behind for a defiant 48. Brooks broke Hannon Dalby's stranglehold on the wickets. The prize scalp of Billings his when the Kent captain nicked behind for 33. Henry decided to hit back at the Bears bowlers. There was little let up from the number eight, but Warwickshire took advantage of his intent. Out caught by subfielder Herft for 34 from 23. And he soon had a third. Navdeep Saini's Kent debut resulting in a duck. Out caught by Hayne. The innings was all over in a hurry. Kent all out for 165 when Quinn chipped Briggs straight to Miles. Advantage Bears. The first innings lasted a session and a half. That was largely down to the impressive bowling of Oliver Hannon Dalby, finishing with figures of 6 for 40, making a bit of a mockery of the sweltering conditions. Cox had top scored with 48, with Henry's attacking 34 a highlight for Kent, but too many had fallen for single digit returns. But Warwickshire weren't going to have things all their own way. Dom Sibley out for five, caught behind with the bowling of Milnes midway through the fourth over. Matt Henry followed it up, Davis squared up, a hint of movement, Crawley with the catch, and the Bears now 12 for two. The match was racing along at some pace. Benjamin was the 13th wicket to fall in the first two sessions when he nicked Saini to leaning to leave Warwickshire 32 for three. Hayne hit back at Kent, moving the score past 50 with T now just around the corner. He was making it look much more comfortable for the Bears now, the deficit now into double figures in the overs before T. And when he walked off with his captain alongside him, the score was 77 for three and Kent's advantage was 88. Hayne, Warwickshire's batter of the season so far, moved easily to 50 after the break. The shot that got in there, one of the best he'd produced in the 64 balls he faced. That took the value of the fourth wicket to 50 as well. Hayne with 39 of them. After playing a supporting role for most of his innings, Rhodes started to find some more fluency, bringing the 100 up with a single off Henry. Kent's slender lead tumbled. After a worrying start, the Bears were now taking charge of the match. It was down to 43 when Rhodes departed. His partnership with Hayne worth 90 when he fell caught by Bell Drummond off the bowling of Milnes. Kent rediscovered their wicket-taking touch. Moosley out, caught behind for a duck off Siney. And then the inform Michael Burgess followed without troubling the scorers. Out caught behind off Siney. Briggs joined Hayne in the middle, stemming the flow of wickets before the close of play, and they chipped away at the deficit. That was down to 10 at the close, Warwickshire the happier of the two sides after the opening day, but they find themselves six down, and Kent will be confident that with a decent effort with the ball when they return to Edgebaston on day two, they can prevent the Bears from putting them under too much scoreboard pressure.